All right, today we're gonna go through putting a CL10 together from unboxing to uh, all the way ready to go out the door to the job site. Brian and I will be doing this today. The uh, There's the lift number, it's a CL10. First thing we start off with is once we take all the plastic off is, we make sure we get one of our stickers and put on it. Um, then as we cut all the plastic away, we wanna make sure that we get a pallet out and the pallets will be numbered and they will coincide with a bucket. Where's our bucket? Over on the orange cabinet and they're coincide right with the numbers A1. And you'll also see, if you don't load them right on the trailer and it's for a later date, they go right where the numbers go with the pallet. All right, we're gonna run through the tools that we wanna get prepared before we get started. Brian's gonna run through and tell you what each tool is. Go ahead, Brian. For the CL10, you're gonna need a quarter inch, 10 millimeter socket. 9 sixteenths quarter inch socket, a Phillips head, whether you use it for the impact or hand, a 8 millimeter Allen head for the 3 8 ratchet, a 15 16 wrench, a 3 quarter inch wrench, a 9 16 wrench, a Set of a press, yes. press wrench, a pair of needle nose pliers, and just a quarter an impact gun, gun with a quarter inch uh, adapter. All right. All right. Now that we've taken all the plastic off of the CL10, we're going to take all the extensions out the hose, the extension hose, the cable. The overhead switch, the um, lock cable release, the overhead itself, and the CLs come with a some tubes to um, for in case you have to set the lift to a lower setting, whether it's lower height wise or low or smaller width wise, they come with some. All right, so why don't we set the, the tops off to the side and... These, I just usually take them and stick them right here on the front side of the left so you gotta carry in that floor. They just come right off like so. And usually I'll have a trash can set up somewhere close to the, um, the lift after unpacking. So then I take all the cardboard and just set it behind the trash can, that way it doesn't take up all the space within the trash can at that very moment. All right, go ahead. All right, now that we got the extensions off, the cardboard off, you can see the cables, the um, hoses, the overhead switch, and the lock release cable. What I do is I'll take the bucket and I'll set it next to the lift or next to the pallet of for the arms, and then what I'll do is I'll take everything out, set it next to it, so you can see what's what. And once you get everything out, there's also stuff inside this box underneath the overhead. It has the power unit, all the hardware, the booklets, and the wedge anchors. What I like to do is take all the wedge anchors and anything that has any type of weight to it and stick it in the bottom of the bucket. And then as I go through and I get um, the smaller stuff, I'll put that on top of the stuff. That way all the weight's in the bottom of the bucket and when you're carrying the bucket, it isn't tipping and doing 
all kinds of crazy stuff so it makes it easier to carry. All right, so I'm gonna help him and we're gonna set this stuff aside and we'll start back. Paperwork needs to go to the office unless it's going right to a job. As you can see in there, we'll pick up in a few minutes. All right, we've got all our stuff. We've got stuff in the bucket, the heavier stuff. We've got all the other stuff around the bucket. We've got our power unit off on the side of the pallet that we've marked and the rest of the arms will go on there when we get done. The arms are still in between the two lifts. We'll get to those after we pull the first side off. So Brian's gonna go through about putting the sleeves on the ends of the forklifts and how we're gonna lift it up and get it ready to put together. All right, if we put sleeves on the forklift, try, try to prevent as much damage to the columns as we can. They will have damage due to shipping and stuff like that, but to try to ensure that we don't damage them anymore, you put the sleeves on. So once you put your sleeves on, if you get on the forklift, go and pick one of the columns out. We got the power unit side column already pulled out. I'm gonna come over and I already cut the plastic, the shrink wrap for the nuts and bolts. And then you can just peel it back and you'll need, I believe it's eight bolts mm -hmm. to affix the extension onto the column. All right, so we're gonna get all those out and get them ready. All right, here we go. And now when you go in on the CL10s, the extensions, they actually have what I like to use as a handle right in the center of them inside. It's where the hose will affix once it's all completed. But I like to grab them by the handle or by this extension for this piece. And then you just flip it up. Depending on the height that you need, it has different adjustments for different bolt holes that you would go to. This one we're going to set on the highest setting. So you just slide it right on to wherever your holes match. The top holes will match, the bottom holes won't because it's got a little bit of play in it. So then you're going to come over and start putting your 916 bolts in. Just snug them up for now, hand tight. Make it a little bit easier to do the sides because, like I said, there's a little bit of play in them. I'll take one, go ahead and throw it in the bottom to fill the gap so that now the rest should be nice and easy to put in. You may need to do a little bit of Adjusting as you can see this bolt doesn't want to go in all that easily just pick up on the top of it Just a little bit and it'll slide right in What is there, a total of eight per lift? Uh, to the yes. top? All right. Yes, eight. Eight, 916th bolts. I fix the um, extension onto the top. Um, there are some other bolts 
that you can put in at this time. Uh, the cable, the cable retainer. What you'll need is you need a 916 by I believe like the three inch. You have three inch. And you grab two nuts, put one of them on actually backwards. And you run it all the way to the end. And then where you're gonna put them, there's a hole right here behind the pulley where the cable will come around and the bolts go right in there. And that's what holds the cable from coming off the, the yes. sheave, right? Now, if you look down in here, you can see there's no way for that cable to jump out of the pulley there. Good, all right. All right, so now that we've got that bolt in there, we're going to go ahead and get the wrenches, and we're going to tighten everything up. Do you do this with a wrench or an impact? I do it with the impact. All right, so we're going to get the impact out, and we're going to tighten up all these bolts, and then we'll move on to our next step. All right, on these bolts, when you're tightening these up, they actually come with hash marks in the back side of the bolt head and the back side of the nut. So normally, you don't need a 916 wrench. You can just hit it with the 916 socket. But sometimes the nut won't grab, so you will have to grab a 916 wrench and use it to hold the nut to get it to tighten down. If it don't grab, but a lot of times you don't need that, right? Nope, you don't need that. All right. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is start unpacking the cables and Brian's gonna run through how he does that. Okay, the cables come wrapped up in a bag on the CL-10s, got them open. They set the trash off to the side. And I like to start on the furthest away from the ends of the cables to take the thread ties off. That way I'm not fighting the cable ends flopping all over the place while I'm trying to get As you it. turn in it? <laughs> yeah. So I just work my way around, unwrapping these. Now you want to keep a little tension on it so they don't flip out and hit you. Now, now that I got these all untied, we don't have no trailers or vehicles in the uh, shop. So if this area down here is open, I'll walk out there and I'll unravel my cable from there back towards the lift. If there's trailers or vehicles inside the shop, I'll go from just outside the, the bay door and work my way back to the lift, unraveling them. All right. What I first do is I'll come down. And I'll just lay them down, one end, don't matter which end, mm -hmm. and then just walk them out. And as you walk them out, they are going to be twisted. So, what I do is I just keep going until I'm all the way to the end. As you can see, there's a loop in there. I'll pull it tight. And then basically, you pull them apart, figure out which way you need to go with them to unravel them. And then just grab them and start flipping whichever one. So you're just unraveling them. All right, so we're going to unravel these and we'll be right back. All right, we've got them unraveled. Now that they're all unraveled, as you can see, you got one on the left, one on the right. You shouldn't have any problems with them getting caught up with each other or anything. And is there two nuts on each side? Yes, on the CL10s, they have a big nut, and then they have a smaller nut in which they call the jam nut. Sometimes these are tight from the factory and you can't break them loose with your fingers, which is the reason why I grabbed the 15 16 wrench and the crescent wrench just in case I need to bust them loose but otherwise so big and small as yeah the the thicker one goes to the bottom the thinner one goes yep, to the top jam nut to the top all right all right so now we're going to take it back to the left
And what I like to do is just drape it over the lift so it doesn't move. And this is the power unit side. So the hose, the hydraulic hose that's in this one is a short one. What I'll do is I'll pull it out and I drape it over the side. That way, whenever I go to put the cable in, it doesn't get all twisted up with the hose and then you'll have a problem if you don't catch it. It was still draped over the side. The hose draped over the side on the CL10s and 12s. You come down here to the bottom of the carriage and sometimes these can be a real pain in the butt, but most of the time they're pretty easy. You just grab the, butt, the base of it and you put your hand on the top side of the carriage and you can push them apart. Once you push them apart, there's a nut right here or a bolt that you need to loosen up. It holds this little retainer so that the cable doesn't come off of the pulley down underneath here. Uh, same thing that the long bolt did yes. up there. Yes. It, okay. Sometimes this bolt can be really tight from the factory. Sometimes it could be really loose. It just depends on what kind of day that person was having. All right. So let's get the stuff and loosen it up. All right, we did have to get an extension out of the toolbox, quarter inch extension. This one wasn't that tight today. Next, what you're gonna do is you're gonna come back over to your cable. I take it and I loop it. I make a big old loop, like so. I always keep the stud in towards me because it's going to be affixed on this side of the carriage. So what I'll do is I'll hold it down like this, and then I can go through the center of the carriage. And if you look down at the bottom of the carriage there, you might should be able to see the cable. Oh yeah, it's all the way down. Yep, it's, it's out. Now that it's all the way down, you're going to come in here. I'll do it with one hand because it's kind of hard to see. But you can see this pin. I'm moving that with my finger. Yep. The cable, you can push it with the cable and then it will ride inside the... I got you. You're pushing it up, yep. putting the cable around the sheave and then letting the pin come down and hold it in. Yep. And as you can see, the sheave's turning, the pin is back down. Once the pin's back down, and that, the cable's Yeah. On. And that nut's what pins that pin so it can't move out. Yes. All right. All right. Now we snugged it back up. The cable's around the sheave. And we're moving on. 